I love yarn. Whenever I go on a knitting craze, the house is covered in the stuff. When I get caught up in a new project, he goes from calling me Tarny to my fuzzy alter ego, Yarny, which is ironically what they call a yarn and unravel. When we heard that there was a cute co-op game focused around two bundles of yarn, I could not turn it down. So last weekend, we both sat down and got all tangled up on date night. Oh, why did it get so Why did the music kick up? What? Whoa. Oh my no! god. Unravel 2 is a puzzle solving platforming game, but with yarn. The little yarnies do a good job pulling on my heartstrings throughout the different levels, and it's fun seeing how they interact. It's really the perfect feel good game to play on a rainy afternoon when there's not much you can do outside. Playing through the game with your partner adds a lot to the cooperative dynamic. It provides you both a glimpse of what tying a knot would look like, so to speak. On the one hand, it shows you how you can both support each other, reach new heights together, and always find your way back to each other. On the other, at times the string that holds you together can feel less like a thread of love and more like a collar and leash. I got stuck. Yeah, I got stuck to you. <laughs> Oh my god. Since we're attached at the hip, we really have to communicate. When we were starting out, we were both kind of playing our own game, but together. He was racing ahead, figuring out the tutorials, while I was busy chasing after sparkles. It wasn't until we both took a leap and wound up dangling on either side of a log that we realized we were playing it all wrong. Oh, dude, there's a huge knot down there. Yeah, because you hopped around. Wait, climb up. You can do it. There you go. And then go around it. No, you gotta go <laughs> Working together is where the game really shines. There are a ton of different ways you can help each other through the levels. We started to figure out where the other strengths and weaknesses were, and along the way, found out which obstacles were fun for who. I'm the designated bridge builder, and I'd rather leave the grappling to him. Ah! <laughs> He moves through this world with such grace and style that it has me a little self-conscious. Unravel digs it pretty easy on me, so the stakes aren't that high. But I still find myself getting embarrassed every time I come in next to him for a rough landing. All in all, I'm able to do it, and that's what's important. It might not be as smooth or flashy as him, but we both end up in the same place. <laughs> we both just like <laughs> I thought I was about to completely it. biffed it. That was great. The times I really start to sweat is when there's a hazard that could put us both back at the start of a section. Nothing gives me anxiety like watching him elegantly maneuver several dangerous flames and then sit down next to the exit and turn around to watch my sorry performance. It's not the end of the world if I die, but I always feel bad unraveling all the work he already did. No! <laughs> Come on. The fact that I can koala him when things get dicey is true to real life. It's not the first time he's whisked me away from my problems, and it won't be the last. I gotta tip my hat to a game that recognizes that one player might be better equipped to handle dodging hazards than the other. Letting us carry the other person whenever we want is amazing, especially for sections where we have to avoid getting burned. It's also tons of fun when he's the one screwing up, because then it's my turn to harass him for slowing us down. You think I can make it? Do you need to, like... In my defense, I lasted a pretty long time. You did. With all that said, my days as the hard carried are something that's mostly behind us. Admittedly, it would be a much faster playthrough if he just zipped through all the sections he could and put me down whenever we needed to collaborate. He refuses to just let me hold on and enjoy the ride the entire game, for good reason. I have to agree, it's much more fun to have a partner. Oh. For the sake of my sanity, please combine with me. One of the more enjoyable things about this game is that it feels like there's plenty for both of us to do. For us, a lot of levels feel sort of like a race to see who can get to the other side and pull the other one up first. Nice. One more. Oh my god! I got you! Ah! Come climb! Climb! <laughs> It's nice to know that as long as one of us makes it up to the ledge safely, the other has a guaranteed rope to victory. It leaves room to experiment and mess around and also gives things a bit of a competitive edge. That's one way to do it. <laughs> oh no! Ah! <laughs> you pulled the <this> boat. <laughs> When we stumble onto a puzzle that requires absolute cooperation, or else there'd be no other way to get across, we set the competition aside and work together. It might take us a few tries, usually when we pick the wrong person for the job. In my defense, I knew it was a bad idea to have me be the climber. I'm way better equipped to push and pull stuff so that my more nimble half can trapeze his way up for the two of us. Maybe I'll try doing that. Let me try one more time. 
<laughs> okay, yeah, you can try one more time. Not quite. The environments in Ravel are really stunning, and it's always fun to see the creative ways objects get used when your characters are tiny. The world always feels so big and scary when you're this size. It's a nice glance at how life looks to our cat, and I gotta say, I'm glad he's happy as an indoor cat. Hey, you're, don't get run over. Mikey! Ah! <laughs> Why was that necessary? For the most part, it's a rather immersive experience, and we go segments without our usual banter because the game just has a relaxing air to it. Of course, all it takes is one of us tripping up and shattering our flow before the other snaps back to reality and can't help but throw a little shade. It's also a little bizarre and immersion breaking when we pass something and stop and think, wait, why is that there if we're supposed to be tiny sentient balls of yarn? Oh, this is such a little sign just for us to read. Yeah, why is it like yarn person sized? The objects and levels can be pushed, pulled, and swung from. It's a literal playground for yarnies, and it definitely brings out our inner child too. I'm usually the second one across in the more elaborate scenarios, not because they're difficult, but because watching him swing and twirl through them is so hypnotic that I end up just sitting at the start watching. We got a good rhythm here. We both have our fair share of distractions. Sometimes it's more fun playing with the objects in the world than moving on to the next map. Okay, wait, I have an idea, speedy. I have an idea. Okay, ready? Okay, am I going? What happened? Shit. What do you mean am I going? All you had to do was sit still. I was. What are you doing? <laughs> The little shiny collectibles are his favorite thing and my literal nightmare. Just when it feels like we're really getting into the rhythm of a level, one of those sparkly balls of light catches his eye and the pacing gets lost. We could be running for our lives from the world's angriest turkey and he'll start pumping the brakes and go after a shiny. All I have to say to him is if he gets to go after all of these, then I get a free ride next time I get chased by a game bird. Ah! When things are winding down for the evening and we can't commit to an entire chapter, we like to play some of the challenges. The most fun we've had were probably the challenge levels because those are the most difficult. Usually when the yarn gets burned, you start over right from the closest checkpoint. But in the challenges, you have to complete the entire challenge in one go. Okay, so I'm thinking this time I combine with you. <laughs> what? Did yeah. I, oh, no. I think you should climb. Oh no. Ah! <laughs> nice try. Motivated by a combined effort to free more yarn for customization purposes, the two of us agree to the classic one more before bed fallacy. I can't tell if he's just really bad all of a sudden or if he just doesn't want to go to bed, but I could have sworn he was better at the game than this. Ow! 